I stand here as Chief Exec of Cheltenham Borough Homes, which is an arm's length management organisation owned by Cheltenham Borough Council, which manages approximately 5,000 homes in Cheltenham, which equates to one in ten of every single home in Cheltenham. The areas that we operate in are areas that are contained within the indices of multiple deprivation, so we have many challenges in, in those estates. Um, the bottom four areas on the multiple deprivation tables are areas where it is recognised from 2017 data that uh, poverty exists and those are the estates on which we are managing on behalf of uh, the council obviously in very close collaboration so one of CBH's responses is to create hubs within those communities I use an example the St Paul's hub um, where we provide a, a massive range of different community engagement activities advice centres engage with the tenants in the locality a lot of that around strengthening themselves and enabling them to, to develop as, as either parents or individuals or children. Um, so an immense amount of work. We, we have dedicated family investment officers who work there. Mention has been made of adverse childhood experiences. This is, this is real um, and I'm, I'm personally delighted to be part of the Gloucestershire panel uh, which is driving forward, ACES as they're called, because we, we need to disrupt um, I use the word disruption in a positive way, not a negative way. We need to dis disrupt some of that intergenerational activity that we read about so often um, and is evidenced on some of those estates where there are challenges. Um, the sector that I work for is often called social housing. Um, I personally don't like that phrase. Um, I think that the social word actually produces stigmatisation. So my view on that is that we, we work in, in a community housing sector because that's about embracing partnerships. It's about, in, in non-managerial terms, joining dots because organisations, statutory, voluntary, um, small, large, lots of resource, limited resource, should and are working together uh, for the benefit of those communities and to, to try and assist with some of the challenges that are represented there not by the entire communities. This is not about an entire community. This is, this is about enabling people within that community to strengthen them, themselves and their families and, and make the kind of changes that will, will affect their next generations. Because we, we know that uh, the children on those, um, in those homes are more at risk of um, crime, they're more influenced by other issues uh, and, and social problems. And we know that statutory organisations are putting resources into very much the same areas because if you overlay the indices of deprivation and you over overlay input from social care, from health, from the police, it's very much the same <coughs> chart that, that's created. So what we find is that a lot of people are living in, uh, in poverty. Um, that could be fuel poverty, it could be food poverty. And a lot of people are struggling, people who may be earning, and uh, there may be more than one person earning in their household, but they aren't um, earning sufficiently. Um, there was a, an article in the Sunday Times yesterday that said that um, the amount of spend in a family that is living on the breadline of poverty that they spend on food is 75% of, of their income. Whereas a family, a wealthier family, um, the likelihood is that they will spend something like 16%. So it's quite a radical shift of the availability of resource and how, and how you spend it and how you, you have to spend it to, to make sure you put food on, on the plates. And obviously we've had an increase in the use of food banks. So these things are all linked. There's not one thing that, that separates off alone. Cheltenham is a very polarised town. We, we have very wealthy uh, part of Cheltenham and then we have areas that are less wealthy. We have different um, indicators about life expectancy. So a, a male born in St Paul's has a seven year less life expectancy than a male born in Charlton Kings. These are quite polarised issues that, that the town has to challenge. Linked in with issues about exclusion rates which um, don't send a, a positive message at the moment. So you know, the challenge is what can we do? Um, as, as has been mentioned, this is about a multi-agency response. This is about organisations working together, not unilaterally together, 
potentially combining resources, certainly combining aims and aspirations, and the key strategies that, that are important. Things like adverse childhood experiences are part of the county health and wellbeing strategy. Housing and place is now one of the seven new priorities for Gloucestershire health and wellbeing strategy. So housing is recognised as a key issue alongside place and other issues. The local authority has its own place strategy, so it's really critical that we engage with that, and that's where the collaboration comes in between our two organisations in particular. It's no point us going in one direction and we find that we're going in a different direction uh, to, to the council. There's a phrase that has, has been put to me before, which is that it's difficult to be poor in a wealthy place. And I think that actually rings true because the expectation is very different. That context of being poor, yet you know that you can walk 20 minutes through the way and you're into multi-million pound houses. The majority of our tenants uh, receive benefits, and about 70%. Um, currently, we have 800 tenancies that are on universal credit, which creates its own set of problems and challenges. Um, and that increase, that number is going to increase uh, over time. So we, we have the challenges that universal credit represents. Um, what are we doing about that in some extent? Well, a lot of this is about trying to create facilities for people to go into work uh, or, or gain skills. So we run work clubs uh, every week where our tenants go and they learn life skills, they learn how to fill out a CV, they develop more confidence. We, we run um, employment initiative service where we have colleagues who work with people to get them into training, to get them into education, to get them into work. Um, last year, we got 62 of our tenants into paid employment, which I think is a, a massive achievement, um, 74 the year before. Um, and we helped support 225 people to access training locally, again, in partnership. So we know from organisations like the Joseph Rowntree Foundation that 14 million people are struggling in this country with poverty. If we translate that into Cheltenham, we know that that is another, an issue that is prevalent in Cheltenham. Most of those people, or a large proportion, are of working age, but we need to look at how we can uh, work with those people to try and stop generational things like worklessness, etc. Um, we have money and benefit advisors who support people to maximise their benefits. They bring into Cheltenham something like uh, £2 million of additional income to allow people to access the majority of the benefits they're entitled to. We have a very successful project which has just recently worked with children who were at threat of being excluded from school. And six, six young people are going through um, what we call the Thrive Project, um, where they're working with us on an intensive basis and it's very successful in terms of them being able to change their outlook on life and, and learn experiences which help them to, to be able to cope better in life. Um, there's a lot of loan shark issues out there. But let's be honest about it, it exists, and that's a, an easy route for a lot of people. So we've got to do a lot of combating loan shark, um, and we have campaigns to combat loan sharks. Um, and, and we use our vans, which are around the town, uh, to, to highlight that and to publicise it, because it, it, it's very easy to, to find expensive money. The answer is to, to make sure that people are, are not finding expensive money that then creates a major series of problems in their lives thereafter. So a number of initiatives, the, the challenge is not as an isolated organisation in partnership, join the dots, make the organisations work together, don't replicate and, and try and combine resources. Thank you. Thank you.